Welcome to World Changers Bible Study. It's 2021, a brand new year with brand new opportunities. And we are here with a brand new series on advancement. Um, I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to our Bible study. It's always good when we can study the Word of God together. Um, I want to encourage you. I know that for some of you, 2020 may have been a dreary year. It may have been a year with disappointment, bad news. But I want to say to you that God has given you in 2021 a brand new opportunity. And there may be some bad news. There may be some disappointments. But I want to encourage you that the word of God speaks to us in every season of life. I want to challenge you that God is with us in all our trials and all our situations. And I want to encourage you to spend some time this year looking at the word of God and listening to his voice as he speaks to you from the pages of his word. I look forward to some wonderful times of sharing in Bible study together with you. I also want to encourage you to go to our Facebook page and also go to our YouTube channel um, where you can follow what we're doing in our church. I want to also let you know that there is a feature that's being introduced to our Bible study. And most of our sessions are done as presentations, um, presentations of Bible study. But I want to let you know that after each third session, we are going to be doing an interactive segment. You're going to be hearing more about this. So after our third session in this series, we are going to be doing an interactive segment. So for session one, it's just going to be a presentation. For session two, it's just going to be a presentation. But for session three, we're going to have a presentation, a short presentation, and then we're going to go into an interactive segment where you'll get the link. You can join us on Zoom and we'll be able to discuss um, what would have transpired in our first three segments, we'll talk about those things, how the word of God has spoken to your heart, what God has said to you. Um, if, if new light was shed on anything for you, um, something that may um, be on your mind as it relates to what we are studying. If there's a testimony that you want to share in light of what um, we are doing. Um, also, if there are questions that you have, because I know that a Bible study presentation um, without an interactive segment does not allow for question and answer, um, for suggestions and all those things. And while you may put some comments um, and so on as the study is going, we know that you're not always able to share with us um, in any detail things that may be on your heart. So I just want to encourage you to stay with us as we engage in our Bible study sessions. And like I said, we're looking at advancement and we're looking at some episodes in the life of David, who was transitioned from being an ordinary shepherd boy in Jesse's house to becoming um, the greatest king of Israel. We want to look at some episodes in his life and we want to allow God to speak to us out of those episodes as we look at his word. So I want to encourage you today um, to read the word of God. I want to encourage you to jot some thoughts down, jot some questions down. And I want that even as we look at God's word together, that we will be able to collectively grow um, and advance in our own individual spiritual lives. So may God bless you even as we study together. So I want to begin by reading for you some verses which will put some context to what we are studying. Um, these verses are from the 16th chapter of the book of 1 Samuel. Reading, the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul since I have rejected him from being king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite. For I have provided for myself a king from among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. 
and invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me him whom I declare to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? And he said, Peaceably I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliah and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on his height or his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. And Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen these. Then Samuel said to Jesse, are all your sons here? And he said, there remains yet the youngest, but behold, he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and get him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ready and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him, for this is he. And then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day forward. And Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. A very interesting text that we have before us. And even as we can consider the whole concept of advancement, I want, I want to begin by saying that advancement is really in our DNA. When we think about advancement, we are thinking about growing, we are thinking about developing, we are thinking about progress and improvement, we are thinking about expansion and maturity. That's what we mean when we talk about advancement. And, and when you think about it, as people, we have been advancing over years, over decades. Um, when, when you think of transportation, you see advancement. We were able to um, master the land and then we were able to master the seas and then we weren't satisfied as human beings and we, we became persons who were able to master the air as it relates to transportation. We, we have moved from one, one set of speed to another kind of speed and so transportation now um, is, is advanced. We, we have advanced in education. We have advanced in technology. All around when you look at mankind, you see advancement. And so when, when you were born the first time, when you were born the first time, born of the flesh, um, not only were you created in God's image and likeness, but according to Psalm 8, you were made a little lower than the angels and you were crowned with glory and honor. God, God filled you with talent and ability and creativity and skill. And so advancement is in your DNA. It, it is um, as though there is this innate desire to be better, to grow, to go further, to do more, um, to embrace more. That's, that's something that is in us. And it's not something that we should try um, to quench because that's what's in us. That was placed in us by Almighty God. But I also want to say that when you were born the second time, the second time, if you are a child of God, um, of course, all of us, once we are alive, we had the first birth. Um, but remember what um, Jesus said in, in the Gospel of John, that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Um, when he said to Nicodemus, you need to be born again. And those of us who know Jesus as Lord and Savior, um, it's because we were born again that we are Christians, that we are people of God. And so when you were born again, when you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, um, this was taken to a new level when we think of the whole idea of advancement. So while the image of God in us, um, as, as theologians will put it, 
what would have been tarnished by sin, it was restored by Christ. And so the Bible says of us who are born again that we have become new creatures. If, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We are a royal priesthood. We are a purchased people, a holy nation. You've become the workmanship of God in Christ. Ears with the Father and joint ears with Jesus Christ. You have become God's special treasure. And there is not only something in you naturally that calls you to greatness, but there is something in you spiritually that calls you to greatness. And I want to say to us, um, even as we study um, these episodes in the life of David, that if you are God's child, God is calling you to greatness. He's calling you to advancement. I believe that there is a place where God wants you to excel and a place where God wants you to thrive beyond measure and beyond your relatives and beyond your resources. Your relationship with God will determine the kinds of levels that God will be able to take you to. And so I want us to jump into this um, episode in the life of David, even as we share and consider a number of things in this first session. Now, now our story picks up with King Saul, the first king of Israel, falling from grace. And, and God was about, about to appoint the new, the next king of Israel. And so he instructs Samuel to go down to Jesse's house and anoint one of his sons as king. And so Jesse brings out Eliab. And, and Samuel is so impressed with, with what he sees that he says, surely this is the Lord, Lord's anointed. But God said to him, no, this, this, is, not, this is not the one. A uh, man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And this is very instructive for us, that there are times when people may look on us and we may not be the ones that are considered by men. But when we are God's children, we are always considered by him. So then, then Jesse brings out Abinadab because he's going down the pecking order. Um, this was not the Lord's choice. And so seven sons were paraded before the prophet. Imagine that. And then Samuel, after God had rejected all of them, he, he inquires, are these all your children? And, and Jesse says, well, the youngest is not here, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel says, go and fetch him. But when he came in, there, there was something about him. And there are times when, you know, people don't look at you through spiritual eyes. They look at you through natural eyes. And you may not have everything that they believe that you should have. Um, I, I, I joke very often uh, and say that, that when, when I was a teenager, there was a young lady who said to me that she wanted to marry a man who was tall, dark, and handsome. And she said of me that I only had two of those qualities. I'm not sure which two I possessed, but um, I, I believe that, that she looked at me through natural eyes. God looks at us and he sees something that is in us. And, and so God saw something in David. And he said, arise, anoint him, for this is he. Now, from Jesse's perspective, David was not the man. From Samuel's perspective, David was not the man. Because we have a point of view. But somebody said that God has a viewpoint. A point of view has to do with perspective. But a viewpoint has to do with seeing things the way they are. And so from God's viewpoint, he knew that David was the man. Now, I'm not sure if you were ever part of an informal cricket team where, where guys, you know, are in the area or a football team or whatever, and the guys are picking a team. They are selecting persons because it's informal, so they need to pick the team on the spot. And so you, you select two captains, and one captain says, give me Barry. The other one says, give me George. And the other one says, give me Tom. And the other one says, well, give me Roger. And, and what they're doing is that each captain is looking for the persons that they consider to be the best. And they want those persons to be on their team. And so they start picking. And what would happen 
is that when the numbers begin to get smaller of those who are left back, it begins to bother your self-esteem because what's happening is that you're beginning now to assume that these persons don't think that I have very much to offer. Um, and, and then after a while, they'll start to add then to, to the end of, of the sentence. So they'll say, well, give me John then. Uh, give me Curtis then. When, when they start to add then, it means that they don't think much of you. And, and, and this is something that we would have experienced um, in villages growing up and, and playing cricket. And, and persons uh, make certain assumptions about you because they don't think that you have much to offer. But when we look at the life of David, we see something very beautiful emerging. The, the, the fact that people may have been picked ahead of you. But when God picks you, when it is God that picks you, you are destined for something that is great. So David was not part of the cast, but God was looking for someone. And the seven that were on the stage were not the ones that were called of God. But there was one that was off the stage and God had appointed him for greatness. And so God said to Samuel, arise, anoint him for this is he. Why? Because what God has for you is for you. And, and if you stay in God's will, God will take you and he will achieve in your life and through your life the great things that he has ordained for your life. Um, because what God has for you, and when God picks you, he picks you for that thing that is great. So I, I just want to challenge you tonight to stay in the will of God so that God can take you and God can move you and advance you exactly where he wants to advance you because you may be overlooked by men, but you're never overlooked by God. I believe that God always wants to take his people somewhere. So even if you feel neglected, even if you feel looked down upon, even if you feel as though um, life is a rut and it's going nowhere, I want to encourage you that if you stay in the will of God, God will take you somewhere. He has great plans for your life. You may not be the most talented. You may not be the smartest in the eyes of men. People may say negative things about you, but God will advance you because that's what God does. So the people that thought little of you are the people um, who will look at you one day and wonder how God was able to do all of this in your life. The people who may have trampled upon you, who may not have opened doors for you and let you into their space one day they will look at you and they will see God's hand at work upon your life, moving you and advancing you um, to new places, uh, uh, allowing new opportunities to be able to open in your life and allowing you to move into greatness because that is what Almighty God does. So in your family, you don't have to be the most popular person, but God will look for you and he will appoint you to something that is great if you stay in his will. Uh, God has already seen you. God has his eyes on you. And if you meet the criteria, then God will be able to advance you. I want to set up the criteria today. Um, and I want to suggest that there are three things that God is looking for in the people that he wants to advance. Um, I want to say, first of all, that God appoints the faithful. God appoints the faithful. You see, sometimes it takes a process. You, you may be the next king, but you may have to be a shepherd first. You may occupy the palace one day, and I'm not speaking figuratively here, but you may have to occupy the sheep pen first. You may be leading a great nation one day, but, but you may have to lead some sheep first. But if you're faithful in keeping the sheep, then God will be able to advance you into other areas of, of, uh, of life where, where he is able to entrust you with things that are greater. Now, now what we know of David, if we read um, 1, Kings, 1 Samuel well, is that David took taking care of his sheep seriously. 
he was faithful in the duty that God gave to him. Now, that's sometimes a problem in the contemporary church. We, we want to be advanced. Uh, we we, we want to move into certain positions and to do exploits. But sometimes the small things that we are given, we don't take them and do them well. We are not faithful in the small things. David was faithful in taking care of the sheep. He was not the first one that was called by Jesse um, to, be, to be inspected by the prophet. He was not the second, nor the third, nor the fourth, nor the fifth, nor the sixth, nor the seventh. But he was being faithful in the task that was assigned to him. And because he was faithful in that task, God was able to take him and anoint him and advance him. And he, above all his brothers, became the next king of Israel. Um, David was the kind of person that decided that he would bloom where he was planted. There are times when we are given a small task to do and we are unwilling to bloom there, uh, but we want to get bigger tasks. That, that doesn't work well because God is looking for persons who he can depend on. Luke 19, 17 says, And he said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, I will give you authority over 10 cities. Now, it's just a principle I want to lift here. A kingdom principle in this parable that Jesus was telling. He's seeing that the servant was advanced. The servant was given greater authority because he had been faithful in little. I, I, I want us to get this today. That if we want God to do great exploits in our lives, then we need to be willing to take whatever task we are given, the little that we are given, and be faithful there. And God will advance us. God will, will take us further and give us more responsibility. He will enlarge our, core, our coast if we are willing to be faithful in little things. So the stage of your greatest accomplishment may not be the stage where you serve now. You know, you may be serving now and even within your, your sphere of service, you may think, well, I'm already doing a lot for the Lord, but God may be willing to even take you further, advance you more. But the key is you need to be faithful in serving where you are planted. You need to be faithful in the little thing that God has given you and God will advance you and give you even more. Um, he's able to bring you from off stage. Um, he, he's willing to take you even though you are not a part of the original cast. And he's able to use you um, to be the one who is great in his kingdom. So first of all, God anoints the faithful. Secondly, I want to say that God appoints the humble. He appoints the faithful, but he also appoints the humble. Um, somebody said that sometimes the way up is down. James 4, 6 says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Matthew 23, 12 says, for whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Now, now there are people that God cannot appoint because they do not want to serve in a small place. They are not humble enough to serve in a small place. There are some people who cannot serve unless they have a title. Uh, because they don't have a title, they, they, they find it difficult to serve. Um, they can't serve unless they're getting psychic rewards where people will come and say, great job, you did very well. You're the best at what you do. People like those kinds of things. And so there are people who will not serve in private. They'll always want to serve in public because when they serve in public, they get notice. They get those um, psychic rewards that make them feel good about themselves and about their skills. But there are times when God will call you to serve in private. And sometimes serving in private when nobody sees and nobody hears, um, nobody gives you thanks and nobody gives you help. That's always a sign of humility when you are able to be faithful in those kinds of areas of service where people don't come out and see you and thank you and applaud 
when you've done what you've done. And I want to say that David humbly served Jesse by keeping the sheep. He wasn't even remembered when the sons were paraded before the prophet because he was humbly doing the task that was assigned to him. But I want to say that if God gives you a small space, a small place to serve, serve there. God will find you wherever you are. Serve where you are. Serve with dignity. Serve with excellence. Whatever God gives you to do, do it well. You don't have to try to appoint yourself. You don't have to try to promote yourself. You don't have to try to advertise yourself. Just be the man or the woman that God wants you to be. Do what God wants you to do. It's you. It's you, the person. It's who you are that impresses God even more than what you are doing. It's you. So when God looks at you and he sees humility in your heart, when God looks at you and he sees faithfulness in your service, you're the kind of person that God wants to work with. So, so your, your humility develops in you what is called an excellent spirit. That's what um, persons like Joseph had uh, and God was able to advance him. So that excellent spirit allowed him to move from place to place to place. Um, from, from the pit to Potiphar's house to the prison and wherever Joseph went, that excellent spirit that he had, that humility that he had, that faithfulness that he had followed him. And because of his faithfulness, because of his humility, because of the excellent spirit that he developed because of those qualities, allowed him to be promoted all the way to the palace as a young man in the most advanced nation in, in the ancient world. And, and this is all because he was where God wanted him to be. And he served God wherever he was. He served God um, in Potiphar's house. He served God in the prison. Humbly served the Lord. Um, not for rewards, but God found him where he was and advanced him. And so David had that kind of excellent spirit. He served his father, his earthly father, diligently looking after his sheep, protecting them from, from the predators that came to attack the flock. He took his sheep seriously. And so God said, this is the man that I want to be the next king. He may not be the best looking in the house. He may not be the tallest in the house. But he's the man I want because he has the qualities that the, the kingdom of Israel will need at this time. So God appoints the faithful. God appoints the humble. And I want to say third, thirdly, that God appoints the truthful or those who are sincere. Those who are genuine. Because the, the prophet said some interesting words to um, Jesse as, as God spoke to him. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God sees the heart. Man is as impressed by the looks. Man is impressed by the emotion. Man is impressed by the noise. Man is impressed by the jargon and the piety and the eloquence. And very often, we measure spirituality by the wrong measuring stick. And that's a problem that sometimes we have in the church. Why? Because man looks at the outward appearance. And so the man that shouts the loudest is seen as the most spiritual. The man who displays the most emotion is seen as the most spiritual. The, the one who has the most antics and, and has the, the most church jargon is seen as the most spiritual. But, but spirituality goes beneath the surface and beneath the looks. And, and so there were those who had the looks, but God looked at the heart. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. God wants people who are truthful and sincere, who are genuine. Persons who are not a servants. God, God doesn't want persons who will be pretenders, where your public persona and, and, and your private persona are not the same. Not, not persons who are going to be good Christians at church, but not good Christians at home. God, God wants persons who can be trusted with secrets, so whose hearts are in the right place, 
who understand confidentiality, who are willing to forgive. God appoints the humble, he appoints the faithful, but he appoints the sincere, those who are truthful. And I want to say to you today, that if God sees the qualities that he needs in your life, he will advance you, he will advance you. Um, God will find you where you are. You, you don't even need to promote yourself and your skills and what you have. God will find you where you are and sooner or later, you will be walking right into greatness. Um, you see, God doesn't stop promoting you or moving you because of your age. It's, it's not that you're going to be too young for God to advance you because God, God in his omniscience and in, in have, having um, all wisdom, he, he knows when to move you and where to move you to. And, and so... Um, there were young people like Josiah who became the king of Israel at a very young age. Um, Joseph was, was very young when, when he left um, his, his native land and, and was sent to Egypt. Um, David that we are talking about was the youngest of his brothers. But in spite of the age and experience of the others, God appointed him. I also want you to know that you're not too old for God to appoint you. The Bible says that the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar in Lebanon planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of God. They will still bear fruit in old age and they will stay fresh and green. So, so you may think, well, I've messed up a few times and God doesn't want damaged goods to use. I want to say that if God was not a God of second chances, None of us would qualify to be appointed of God to do great things. But God is able to take your life. Um, like like the, the writer of one of our famous hymns says, He will take the tangled strands where you have wrought in vain, that by the skill of his dear hands, some beauty may remain. And God has a way of using every experience in your life to be a blessing to others. So your experiences are not wasted. So what the enemy means for evil, God uses for good so that he can advance you, so he can take you higher, so he can take you further, so that he can make you better and make you more influential in your workplace. You'll become the person that is sought after. When persons want somebody to pray with them, they'll seek you out. Why? Because God appoints points you, God advances you, God broadens your influence simply because you're the one who meets his criteria. You're the one who's faithful. You're the one who's humble. You're the one who's truthful and sincere. And so because you have embraced these qualities, God is able to use you and use your life in even greater measure. So I want to say three things to you before I close tonight. One, stay faithful. Two, stay humble. Three, stay truthful. And God will advance you. I enjoyed sharing with you this evening. Um, I want to challenge you to, to begin to read some more of uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16. I want to encourage you to read it, to read it, to read um, the episodes in the life of David. We're, we're going we're gonna to deal with a few of them. We're going to come back to this same episode. And we're going to, this evening, we were talking about the whole idea of how God appoints you. Um, in our next session, we're going to be talking about um, not just being appointed for advancement, but we're going to be talking about being anointed for advancement. Because one of the things that God instructed Samuel to do was to anoint David. He appointed him, but God also anointed him. So we want to talk about that in our next session. Glad that you could be with us this evening for our Bible study. Great that we could study the word of God together. I want to encourage you to go to our Facebook page. And I want to encourage you to go to our YouTube channel just to check out what we've been doing. Have a look at some um, of the other things that we're doing in our church and I just pray that God will bless you. I look forward to being with you next time for another World Changers Bible Study.